Maria, let me ask you first, what on earth spurred this massacre in southern Philippines? Well, certainly it was unexpected because it is the worst election-related violence this country has ever had in history. Certainly, as you pointed out, the worst, uh, the most violent uh, incident of violence against um, journalists. What spurred it? Uh, one man who wanted to file a certificate of candidacy, nomination papers to run for provincial governor. Um, he was trying to, to file the certificate of candidacy in a clan, in an area where his political rival uh, uh, was, uh, this, it, it was a stronghold of his political rival. And when, when he was warned not to go, he thought that it would be safe to send women in his family, uh, close friends, and they actually asked journalists to go with them, essentially as protection. Well, that wasn't protection enough, and what we saw happen on Monday was the killing of, at this point, about 57 people in one shot in broad daylight. It was a very brazen act that shocked the country. Was there any, any possibility that it had anything to do with the struggle against the Islamic militias there? At this instance, no, although the situation that created this did have something to do with the struggle against the Islamic militias. Um, what we've seen in the past is that the political warlords, these, these clans, um, were actually used by the government to help in the fight against the Muslim insurgencies. Uh, in this instance, it's the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. And the, the man, the family that's been pinpointed by authorities as, as being behind the killings, the Ampatuan clan, is actually uh, 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 working, had worked with the government in the past to help fight the MILF. Let me turn to Mustafa. Warlords, clans, Somalia, it's all synonymous. You're the last independent working journalist there just about. How difficult is it to work there? Well, uh, it's very difficult really to practice journalism in Somalia, which is one of the uh, worst humanitarian crises in the world this time. And uh, Journalism in Somalia is just like sacrifice because if you go and do journalism in Somalia, that means you are devoting for what you are doing. So it's very hard really to practice journalism. So what's happened to you? How do you go out in the streets, for instance, and, and be able to gather news? Uh, it's just like taking chances, you know. It's your job and your duty to go out and to see what's happening there and to get news. So in order to make this uh, as you need, you take, you know, a lot of uh, precautions before you go. And uh, if you see that it is very difficult to you to go the time and to, to see what's happening even, you won't because of the insecurity. What's happened to some of your friends, some of your colleagues? Uh, the worst incident I remember is uh, one of my friends, Mukhtar Mohammed Tirawi, he has been a director of one of the local independent radio stations in Mogadishu. He has been killed in Bakara in, in, in a daylight. In the famous arms market. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, very close to my office. I was doing something in, in the office at the time and uh, uh, eventually I've hit gunshots. And when I was out there, I have seen body lying in blood of uh, in a pool of blood and uh, I couldn't really uh, move you know with, uh, with uh, I was in shock this is one of the worst realities in, in and this year alone we lost six colleagues just six. like Mokhtar, six yeah Maria the CPJ has just labeled the Philippines as the single most dangerous place for journalists what is it about the situation there that makes it so difficult to cover the news I think part of it is the uncertainty of where the danger is coming from. Uh, Christian, this isn't the first time that's happened. Uh, in 2003, uh, right when the Iraq, uh, when the conflict in Iraq was starting, uh, the Philippines was labeled the most dangerous place for journalists, and then Iraq bypassed it in succeeding years. Here, what you're seeing is it, it's not like um, NATO warfare when you're working in the streets of Mindanao or in the streets of Manila. Uh, you're facing conflicts not just from Muslim rebels, you're 
conflict from the NPA, the communist rebels. You're also dealing some at times with a government that that moves against journalists. In 2006, for example, we had uh, several journalists, uh, half a dozen journalists, arrested in a one-day siege. Essentially, journalists who were trying to cover an attempted coup. So the danger comes at you from different sides, and I think the worst part is that so far in the last eight years, out of 74 journalists who have been killed, only four journalists, only four cases have found resolution. So it's created a certain sense, of, uh, a culture of impunity. I was going to ask you about that. Is there any pressure, is there any sense that the authorities, the judicial process is moving against or can be persuaded to move against the killers of these journalists? It's certainly moving very slowly, and there is pressure that's being placed on the government. Journalists are starting to come together to try to push for justice in this situation. Um, but so far, again, justice is very slow. But the justice system in the Philippines is only one of the problems it's had. Part That problem is connected to endemic corruption. Uh, so as the country is struggling for transparency and accountability for a government that is both transparent and accountable, journalists are doing their best to do their jobs, mm -hmm. to hold both the public and the private sector accountable in a safe, a safer manner as possible.